Section 31 is entitled Differentials. First, we're going to start off with this formula. The total differential is defined to be dz, which is v sub x dx plus the partial with respect to y dy. So if z is equal to 3x squared y cubed, we want to find the total differential. So we need zx. Think of 3y cubed as the constant times x squared. So z sub x is 2x. You multiply the 2 by the 3y cubed, you get 6y cubed x. That's z sub x. z sub y, think of 3x squared as a constant. The derivative, therefore, will be 3 times the constant times y squared. So, partial z is this times dx plus the partial with y times dy. And there it is. derivative of this because 2x to the fifth is a constant. So dz would be z sub x times dx plus z sub y since it's a negative 8y. Adding a negative the same thing as taking away the positive times dy. So finding the total differential is straightforward. So like always with differentials, you could approximate. You could approximate things. For example, suppose f of xy is 3x minus 4y. And we want to approximate f of 1.05 comma 2.1. Suppose we want to approximate that. Well, first let's actually calculate it exactly. It's 3 times 1.05 minus 4 times 2.1, which is 315 minus 8.4 is negative 5 point, I guess, 2, 5. Okay, that's the exact answer. Now, 
what is f of 1 comma 2? I picked the closest number to 1.05, the friendliest number closer to 1.05, and close to 2, 0.1. I picked the closest integer. The f of 1, 2 is 3 times 1 minus 4 times 2. 3 minus 8. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. Now, what is the difference between the exact answer and our lame approximation? So, the change in z would be f of 1.05, 2.1 minus f of 1, comma 2. The negative 5.25 minus a negative 5. Now, when you subtract, you find out how much bigger one number is than another. Well, I know the difference between those numbers. It's 0.25. And since this number is smaller, smaller minus larger is always negative. It amazes me how students will get 10.25 out of this answer. Now, these numbers are not 10 or pi. They're very close to one another. Okay, that's the change in Z. Well, we want to do it slightly differently. We want to use calculus. In fact, we don't really want to do this one. That's what we're trying to get out of doing. We did it once here just to show how close the answers will be. See, we know that dz, which is similar to delta z, dz is zx times dx plus zy times dy at the indicated point. Now, let us find zx. zx is simply 3, and zy is negative 4. And in fact, zx at the point 1, 2 is still 3, and zy at the point 1, 2 is still negative 4. We're finding dz at 1.052.1. And z sub x, we're finding that at 1, 2. z sub y is at 1, 2. I didn't mean to say equal. So, dz is zx at 1, 2, which is 3, times dx, which we'll talk about in a moment, plus zy, at 1, 2, which is negative 4 times dy. Now, the change in x. In our friendly point, it was 1, 2. In our unfriendly point, it was this. Well, the change in x went up 0.05. The change in y, it went up 0.1. 3 times 0.05. 0.05 is like a nickel. Three times a nickel, you know what that is. You know what it is like your name. But you have to think that way. We know it's going to be negative. Four times a dime is 0.4. When you add those two numbers, you get negative 3.85. bothered by that. Of course you get negative a quarter. Negative 0.25. Now, if you know, so now, if you want your approximate answer, if you want your approximate answer, f of 1.05 2.1, this is approximately f of 1, 2 plus dz. f of 1, 2, we did that on the top here, and we got negative 5. And you add on dz, and you get
a negative 5.25, which was exactly correct. Which was exactly correct. The reason it was exactly correct was because the original function was linear. So in fact, you can actually say equal to. So the nice thing is, is most of this stuff we could have done in our head. For example, we could have done this in our head or on pencil and paper without suffering. And we could have done this in our head and then we could have gotten that. We could have done all this in our head. And then you would do this arithmetic and get your approximate answer. None of it was brutal. We didn't have to square a number that has three decimal places. Or a three digit number. Now, suppose we want to, we're given that f of x, y is 9 minus x squared minus y squared. And we want to find f of the same value. We want to find f of 1.05, 2.1. But we don't really want to, we don't mind an approximation. So let's do it exactly and make believe we didn't do that. And then we'll do it with an approximation. We can actually look to see how close our answers were. It's 9 minus 1.05 squared minus 2.1 squared. This happens to be brutal. I even have to use a calculator to know what 1.05 squared is. And according to my calculator, it gives me that number. And 2.1 squared, I have to know that. But a lot of you don't know what 21 squared is. So what we have is 9 minus 5.5125. The answer will be 3.4876. That last digit should have been a 5. So 3.4875. That's the exact answer. And f for 1, 2 is 9 minus 1 squared minus 2 squared is 9 minus 1 minus 4, which is 4. So our change in z is 4. Actually, it's the exact answer minus the approximate answer, which is negative 0.5125. That's our change in z. Okay. Now we just did all that for the fun of it, so we can compare our answers. Let's suppose we want, given the top line, we want to find f of 1.05. So the change in x, it went up 0.05. And the change in y, it went from 2 to 2.1. It went up 0.1. Up means positive. If instead of 1.05, it was 0.98, I would say that delta x was negative 0.02. I would say it's negative 0.02. Okay, so now if we, f x is negative 2x, and f y is negative 2y. Because with respect to x, that's constant. The derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. And with respect to y, 9 minus x squared is a constant. Its derivative is 0. Minus the derivative of y squared will be minus 2y. Okay, now f x at 1, 2 is negative 2. 
plug in 1 for x. Now my fault is no y to plug 2 into. And f sub y at 1 comma 2 will be negative 4. Will be negative 2 times y, which is 2. Be negative 4. So now dz is the partial with respect to x times dx. And I guess we can call these dx's, dy's. Plus the partial with respect to y times dy. And it's at the indicated point. And zx is negative 2 times dx, which is a nickel, 0.05, plus z sub y, which is negative 4, times 0.1. So we get minus a dime, minus 0.4. which is negative 0.5. The change in z or dz is negative 0.5, which is fairly close to the exact change in z. Delta dz is approximately the change in z. So what we're saying is, is that f of 1.05 comma 2.1 is rather close to, as long as delta x or dx and dy is small. And delta x and delta y, they were pretty small. This is approximately f of 1, 2 plus dz. f of 1, 2, we did that somewhere, and we got 4. f of 1, 2, so that calculation we have to do is 4. And we had to find dz, which is negative 0.5. So we're getting 3.5 as the answer. And the exact answer, the exact answer is 3.4875. It wasn't off by much. 3.5000 minus 3.4875 is 0 0.0125. Tens, hundred, thousand, ten thousandths. A hundred and twenty-fifth, ten thousandths. Okay, it's a very small number. It's a very small number. Well, it depends. I mean, if you're building a bridge and the error, if the error is that number, maybe that's huge. Maybe that's huge, like the bridge is going to collapse in the first week. Maybe if you want to make ball bearings for roller skates, being off by 0.0125 of an inch isn't that significant. Maybe it is. I'm not into ball bearings, okay? What I'm saying is sometimes that would be a lot, sometimes it'd be a little depends upon what you're doing. But I do promise you as a number, if dx and dy are small, the error will not be much. Okay, the change in z will not be that much. The error would be small. The smaller dx and dy are, the smaller the error is. You let dx and dy be big, the error will be big. The error is a function of how small dx and dy are. I take it when it's linear, as our first example, wouldn't matter how big both dx and dy are. This wouldn't matter. Let us try one more problem. Suppose you come to know that at 6 of x, if f of x is simply x over y. And you want to approximate f of 1.05 comma 2.1. The x value goes on top. 
the bottom value goes on the bottom. So you realize the bottom is twice the top. You can move the decimals over two places on top to the right and two places on the bottom. This bottom number is two times 105. The top number is one times 105. The 105s cancel out, you get a half, 25. Wasn't that bad to even do in your head? But sometimes you don't know that. You just run to the calculus, which is cool. Now, so now let's do the calculus. We know that f of 1.05 is a comma 2.1, excuse me. F of that, we can approximate it. Minus 2.1. This is approximately F of 1, 2 plus dz. So we have to find F of 1, 2 and F for, excuse me, and dz. And add them up. F of 1, 2, well, it's x over y. The half is 0.5. So, I have the point 0.5. Now I need to find dz. Well, if f of x is x over y, then f sub x, think of it as x over 7. The derivative will just be 1 over 7. 1 over y. And after all, it is 1 over y times x. The derivative of a constant times x is the constant. Now to take the partial with respect to y, I'm going to think of it as x times y to the negative 1. Remember, it's y to the 1 on the bottom. When I bring it to the top, it's y to the negative 1. Then you bring down the power, you get negative x. You make the new power 1 less. So it's negative x over y squared. Now, fx at 1, 2 is 1 over 2. f sub y of 1, 2 is negative 1 over 4. 0.5, negative 0.25. Okay. So possibly right in here, I'll find dz. dz is f sub x, 0.5, times dx, which is 0.05, plus fy, which is negative, so I'll write it as negative, times 0.1. Well, 5 times a nickel, or half of a nickel, is 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025, which is 0. k is 0. So I plug it in for dz is 0. And when I add these, I get 0.5, which was exactly right. Which was exactly right. Okay, sometimes you're going to get the exact answer, especially when x and y are linear. Especially when x and y happen to be linear. That completes the section on differentials.